If there is a movie that doesn't need a prequel, it's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Probably Roald Dahl's most iconic character due to his mercurial and mysterious nature. So naturally we're given a movie to undo some of that mystery. Wonka. The film is generally pretty good, but at no point did I ever believe this character was Willy Wonka. Let me explain. Wonka is a prequel to the 1971 classic. It's not a readaption or reimagining. It uses the same musical cues and, be- and also the same unique Oompa Loompa character design, which inspired a generation of British women. Well, Roald Dahl wrote something different. The Oompa Loompas from his original 1960s book were little African pygmy people. Literally. Naturally, this caused offence, and they were later changed to little white pygmy people instead. Much better. Kind of weird, really. I thought giving job opportunities to diverse, less abled immigrants was a good thing. Maybe Wonka was just trying to improve his ESG score. Little African pygmies tick a lot of boxes. I'm just saying. Anyway. Within this cinematic universe, this guy becomes this guy. And I don't buy it. See, Willy Wonka is such a memorable character because he's a brilliant balance of archetypes and contradictions. He's part creative genius, part magician, part mad scientist, and also part sociopath. He's an obsessive recluse, like an autistic, candy-mad Howard Hughes. He's not quite at the stage where he's urinating in glass jars, although that would be one way of finding new exotic flavours. But Wonka is not a people person. No one has seen him for years, and he treats the misfortunes of children with aloof apathy. She was a bad egg. You can actually feel it running down my throat! Stop! Don't! Totally indifferent to their parents' trauma, do something! Hell. Police. Murder. Where's she going? Where all the other bad eggs go. Down the garbage chute. He's even engineered a horrifying ride to make his guests create their own chocolate river. In their underwear. This, my friends, is sadism. All while creating this whimsical, diabetes-inducing paradise of wonder. It makes Willy Wonka a paradox, unpredictable and exciting, a fascinating enigma. Young Wonka doesn't really have any of this. He's a nice guy, performing good deeds wherever he goes. But he's naive, signing his life away on dodgy forms, falling for obvious tricks. He can't even read. You can't read. Can you? He's brilliantly talented, and highly inventive, and very moral. That is stealing! He doesn't mind stealing balloons, though, even though they cost one sovereign each. That's about 200 sovereigns worth of balloons! Steady on, mate! So what happens to Wonka between movies? Mr. Wonka is ruthless. He doesn't give a shit about people. That's what makes him so great. He fired all his employees because someone leaked his secrets. This is the biggest chocolate factory in the world, laying off thousands of people. Work the factory? Thousands. Most of whom were completely innocent. Well, tough shit. Totally ruthless. He replaces his workforce by smuggling in foreign workers, who've spent most of their lives living in fear of being hunted by weird monsters. A wang doodle would eat ten of them for breakfast and think nothing of it. And he pays them in cocoa beans. The one thing they're most addicted to. A kind of indentured servitude. Ruthless. And good business if you ask me. Lower overheads, cheaper prices. I mean, they're small too. How many cocoa beans can they really eat? And let's not forget how Wonka treats animals. No. 
I'm talking about whipping cows to create whipped cream. Precisely. Try getting that past Peter. Aside from treating all sentient life forms with cold indifference, Wonka is steely and extremely driven. He's highly successful, probably a billionaire, and never leaves the factory. Just work, work, work. No family, no relationships. Unless... Wait, no. Better not go there. Why is Wonka so obsessed with chocolate? Weirdly, the flashbacks in Tim Burton's crappy remake do a good job of explaining. It's a mixture of being denied something he desired, until it becomes a childhood obsession. And also a way of rebelling against his strict father. No son of mine is going to be a chocolate. It works. Candy becomes a mythic, forbidden pleasure in his formative years. And losing that familial bond means Wonka seeks adoration from the world. How does Wonka explain it? His mother gives Wonka a homemade chocolate bar and tells him to follow his dreams. She dies and Wonka carries it around in his pocket for 10 years as a memento. Well, this is just silly. Whenever I've had chocolate in my pocket, it ends up as warm melted sludge. I have to suck the bastard off the wrapper. Also, old chocolate doesn't taste good. It gets, it's got a really bad aftertaste. Yeah, that's bad chocolate. Ugh, that's bad chocolate. That is Try old that. chocolate. <coughs> and another thing. If you're such a good mum, writing sentimental messages for your son, at least teach him how to read. The kid's about 12. Get your priorities right, love. Sure. He looks like Wonka. Same clothes, same cane, same hat. But a character is more than a costume. I mean, young Wonka doesn't even get angry when Slugworth tries to kill him. Twice! This is the same guy who loses his shit at Grandpa Joe when he asks him for a bit of chocolate. Young Wonka risks his life to save an orphan girl, then years later exposes children to experimental substances and dangerous technology, after getting them to sign their rights away. But you wouldn't begrudge me a little protection, a drug. It's basically a clinical drugs trial, leaving some kids with life-altering injuries. It always goes wrong when we come to the dessert. Mm. Always. I suspect the filmmakers did this consciously to be more family friendly than the original. A Wonka without the edge and peril usually found in Roald Dahl's books, who is sort of semi-cancelled these days. And also, children's movies were very different in the 1970s. If it was me, I would have approached Wonka like The Prestige or Amadeus. A fierce rivalry between two chocolatiers. One who is good, but one who is great. Wonka. A tale of envy and the true cost of ambition. Where a naive, wide-eyed boy becomes a cunning, ruthless entrepreneur. First you get the chocolate, then you get the power, then you get the Oompa Loompas. The seeds of Willy Wonka, the real Wonka, need to be there from the start. We need to see them develop and flourish. Of course, you could be forgiven for thinking that there is a possibility that the Wonka we see is actually just a persona he employs just to find a suitable heir, and his real personality is something completely different. Well, you're wrong. He uses children as human guinea pigs. And despite saying they'll be fine... Mr. Wonka, what's gonna happen to the other kids? I promise you they'll be quite all right. We have good reason to question his judgment. Great. He's completely unharmed. You call that unharmed? And in the second book, Wonka is just as weird and reckless. He almost kills Charlie's grandma when she overdoses on age-reversing candy. And disappears. Wonka giving the factory to Charlie could be seen as an act of generosity, or a method of keeping control. A grown-up would want to do everything his own way, not mine. 
That's why I decided a long time ago that I had to find a child. Charlie Bucket is no genius. He knows nothing about food or hygiene. He's been eating cabbage water his whole life. He didn't even wash his hands after picking a dirty coin out the drain, then using those same hands to eat chocolate. He gets sewage all over his Wonka bar, and doesn't even notice a difference in flavour. Yeah, great pick to run a chocolate factory. Don't get me wrong, I like the film, it's good. Timothy Chalamet is likeable and caring and pleasant, but that's not Willy Wonka. I told you not to, silly boy. I guess what I'm saying is, there should be more disregard for children's well-being and cold-blooded pursuit of greatness, which admittedly is uh, not a great place to argue from. Hmm, maybe my blood sugars are getting a bit low. Well, it's a good job I have a chocolate bar here in my pocket for such occasions. Please click like and subscribe if you want to hear more of my bullshit. A little nonsense now and then is relished by the wisest man.